Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully uh, the holidays are treating you well. I've got a nice little Christmas present here that I'm about to unbox. This is the uh, Ohm Tech Chuck Style Rotary. So let's uh, dig in. Oh, before I do that, if uh, you haven't already subscribed, please do that. That's gonna help me out in the long run. Uh, just starting out this channel, but I'm really excited to uh, bring everybody uh, new content and all sorts of fun um, projects. So I do uh, laser, CNC, 3D printing. I like to, to bring all of these creative aspects together and uh, come up with uh, fun stuff. So, all right, enough of that, let's get into it. Fight like digging in to a gift to yourself. So one of the one of the cool things about ordering stuff from the Ohm Tech official website is their um, points policy. So I think you get a point for every dollar you spend. And after I bought my laser, I was able to uh, do a couple other things that you know if you sign up to their uh, Facebook group, follow their Instagram, all these various things, you can get more points creating an account gets you a bunch of points. So after purchasing my laser and chiller, um, I was uh, pretty much, I had enough points, I think 6,000 points, you can get a $150 gift card. And so I was able to do that. And this Chuck style rotary had just come back in stock. And so I was able to use that gift card. And then, so this ended up costing me about $100. I think it's normally like, I think it's been on sale for since it came back, it's maybe $249, $259, something like that. So, all right. Um, so take a look at what you got in the box here. It is, again, just like the, uh, I have the four wheel rotary uh, that I think I've already done an unboxing on that one. I need to, I may need to still get that on up on the channel, but so this is the Chuck style rotary. So I'm gonna do a really quick overview. We're not gonna throw this one on the machine yet, but uh, I just kinda of wanna talk about this. And then we'll also talk about why you maybe wanna choose one style over the other. So let's get this thing out of the box. Uh, we do have the only uh, thing other, the only other thing in here besides the rotary is your instruction manual. And just like with the other one, I got three sheets of paper, uh, two of them, are in English. I noticed on the last one, yes, they have, so they, it's probably US and European um, because all of these like net weight nine kilograms and then they have the pounds in parentheses, whereas this one, you have 19.8 pounds and then the kilograms in parentheses. And then uh, this is, I believe is German. So two in English, one in German. So you've got that. And then the, the beast itself and weighing a good 19 pounds. Definitely not a, she's not a featherweight. So there you go. Let's uh, get rid of some of this packing. You know, they put this on here to make sure that nothing slides around. I'm really excited for this unit. Um, I have been doing quite a bit of uh, drinkware on the four wheel and it's been working really well. I do have some uh, accessories that I'm currently 3D printing for that one. We'll talk about that in a future video. But um, uh, Chuck style rotaries, the one advantage is when the chuck turns, whatever you have attached to it is turning. There is no possibility of slippage like you get with the other ones. So I'm hoping, we'll see how this uh, works out in future videos, but I'm hoping that um, I will actually be able to do vector style graphics with this. Sometimes those are cleaner than what you're gonna get on the four wheel rotary where your, um, you know, the gantry is, is moving back and, and forth and you really, you want to rotate in one direction and never go back uh, you want to minimize that as much as possible because anytime that 
your drinkware, whatever you have in there, if it slips at all on those rubber wheels, then things aren't gonna line up anymore. That is a lot less likely uh, to happen with this. So, again, I'm probably talking way too much about not this unit here, but uh, so now you can see, so we have our, our chuck, and it's, uh, I'm gonna leave this on for, for now. It's a big, massive piece of metal, and so they've oiled it to prevent rust, and it's still kind of oily, and I just don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with that right now. So, but you got your chuck, it looks like it comes with a few different jaw styles in here, probably for different uh, sizes. You've got the key, uh, for those of you that are my age, probably remember back when drills, uh, your electric drill always had a chuck, and uh, it, you know, you, you couldn't just turn it and loosen it, you actually had to have the chuck uh, to uh, open and close those jaws. So we've got our uh, chuck, looks like, and there is a set screw knob in here that is, I believe, oh, it's it's for the clamp. Since this is an, unbox, an unboxing, you don't want to shortchange anybody. So we've got this. So depending on the size, of what you are working with with your laser. So that's going to keep this from, from being able to, to move back and forth on the rail. So depending on what the size that you're working with, you've got this end piece here. So we're going to Imagine, so if I were engraving this tumbler, I can expand the jaws to lock on the inside lip here and then put this right in the center and that's going to let this rotate freely and uh, provide a little bit of a, a pivot point so this thing isn't just dangling in space. So it gives it a little bit of support. So that's nice. So yeah. And then Standard, this is the four pin connector is going to go on your Y axis gantry. And uh, eventually, when I do my next video on showing this in action, and I will uh, kind of show how I set it up in my machine. And we'll see, I think this is actually longer than the other one. I'll do, I'll bring the other one up here in a bit. We'll do a, a little comparison. So, I'll probably have to make a, a separate jig for this one. And yeah, so that is about it with the uh, the Ohm Tech. At least this is where I bought it. Um, they don't make this. It's made in China, I'm sure. And they just uh, resell it because you can you can buy this from other other brands as well, or you can get it on eBay unbranded. But uh, so that is your Chuck style rotary. Welcome back, or no, welcome me back. You didn't go anywhere. Uh, so this is the two rotary uh, devices side by side, and I was correct, this one, the uh, chuck style is about um, probably three inches longer than the four wheel rotary. And let's talk about why you might choose one over the other. So what I've been doing a lot of, and this is just a uh, family dollar tumbler, you can get these, they're a buck a piece, and they engrave uh, quite nicely. So. I've already got it set up here. You can see it's level. Like I said, uh, this is a, a an attachment that I 3D that I designed and 3D printed. I uh, hope to be selling these soon. And I am currently printing a back piece that will hold this steady uh, to prevent the your your item from moving back and forth, which sometimes will happen as you're engraving. And if again, if this this has any tendency to slide, then your engraving is not gonna be very pretty anymore. So an item like this, you know, a glass tumbler, uh, this is the perfect kind of rotary to use for that. You, you could, but uh, definitely would not recommend. You could put it in the chuck. Now, metal and glass, not a great combination, and as you turn this to exert pressure on the glass, um, you're gonna get it pretty tight, you're gonna know it's too tight when your glass shatters. So that's one reason why you wouldn't want to use this on glass. But like I said, 
Now, if I were trying to do this tumbler on this rotary, I got a couple problems. One, now I could take this off, but one, if I wanted, you know, do it this way, I've got this kind of in the way. If I put this here, um, yeah, it just it gives you it gives you some issues and whatever is in contact with these wheels, this circumference, you have to enter that into your software so that the uh, machine basically knows how far that it's turning it. So you could again, if this were removed, you could put it on here this way. Um, you just have to figure out your design. But again, like I said, if, if, if this and especially you know as these things get larger. Um, you know, if there's any slippage in there, you're gonna have, you have the potential for issues. Now, on the chuck, on the chuck style, I can lock this in here and it's, it's gonna go. There is no slippage, it's gonna be fine, everything uh, should work out. Here we have a, this is a Contigo coffee, travel coffee mug. And what I want to do is I'll get some uh, close-ups of the uh, the graphics that I tried to do on this. Now this was done on my Atom Stack X7 Pro. The uh, CO2 lasers, like my own tech, own tech, will not mark stainless steel unless you put a coating on there. It's really not what it's designed for. Metal. The diode lasers do have the ability to do some very light etching on stainless steel. But this was done, my Atom Stack uses a, a roller system. It's not, it's not the four wheel type, it's actually the two, uh, the two bars, uh, kind of like the hot dog rollers. And this was the first thing that I ever tried to engrave. And I spent literally an entire day trying to figure out why my graphics um, kept messing up. And I thought it was a settings issue. You know, I just gotta get it, I, if I get it right in Lightburn, it will eventually work out. And so, and of course, you know, the diode laser is super slow, so I'd start this going and an hour or two, you know, well, actually it was about an hour, an hour later, um, I'd come back, you know, it'd start out, it would be looking fine, but I'd come back and it would be all messed up. And again, this was a vector graphic. And so, just like when you watch your, uh, whether it's a, you know, CO2 gantry or the diode lasers, uh, it's moving X, Y, you know, up and down, back and forth, and it's doing each one of these little, you know, these little vectors, and it's just moving all over the place. And so, the uh, on the roller, this thing is is moving, you know, back and forth, you know, very micro movements all over the place. And of course, every time it's making those movements, it's has the tendency because it's being driven just by those rollers on the bottom. You know, it doesn't quite catch, and so this slips a little bit. And that's why this stuff is just gets off. Um, it, it, it's never quite coming back to the same point. And, you know, thus you have this, uh, you have this mess that I ended up with. And it took me, I tried, I put rubber bands on this, I put weights inside of it, I did all the, you know, the tips and techniques. Uh, and it wasn't until I finally realized, you know, what I need to do is not do a vector. I just need to change this into a bitmap. And then what it does is, you know, is the, the diode is just going back and forth and your container is just slowly turning and it's only turning in one direction. Um, and so that, that chance for error is much less. So this rotary style chuck is very easy to use. All you have to do to uh, change out your media is loosen it and uh, this is sort of, I, I feel like it, I wanna say it's reverse threaded. When you turn it to the, if you turn it clockwise, the jaws go inward, so that's kind of loosening it. And if you go obviously counterclockwise, then uh, it, the jaws are expanding. But I guess that, de that kind of depends on the way you're uh, attaching stuff. But anyway, so now to, uh, the one thing I will note, that you have to pay attention to when you're putting stuff on here is you need to make sure that this is flush with the front of the jaws to ensure that you don't have this thing wobbling. Obviously you could get this off axis and then it's not going to maintain, it, it's not going to be parallel and your engraves is not going to come out very well. 
You also want to be careful not over tightening anything. I'm sure it would be very easy to keep cranking on these jaws um, and you would it would not be difficult to bend the rim of your drinkware or like I mentioned before with something that was you know like glass you would just it would just shatter on you crack uh, etc so that is is that's all it takes to put in something this large now you don't have a ton more room you can see now again I believe I think there's a, a screw stop that you could take out you could completely remove this if you wanted to do something that was a little bit longer so this doesn't have to be a limitation but obviously the longer it is you may end up with that tendency for something to droop which you don't want to have happen in the middle of an engrave um, it's not going to be good and, and obviously you don't want you, the, the, probably the worst thing would be if you had something that was uh, off center Let's see if I can you know if you have something that started to droop mid, uh, well best case is it, it would fall off like that the worst case would be that it would continue to rotate and now you've got low points and high points and you wouldn't want a high point to where you actually hit uh, the bottom of your your uh, your laser if it were that low my focus distance is 18 millimeters so probably not super likely to happen but, uh, so there you have it that is the uh, Chuck style rotary when I get this fired up and start a project we'll take the camera back out there and give everybody a, a look at what's going on but uh, yeah so super excited uh, if you found this video helpful, again, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon in the future.